Welcome back. Well, we're all American tonight and looking forward. Who better than a futurist from the US? Yes, a futurist, not an astrologer, but a man who bills himself as America's leading futurist or the CEO's futurist, having advised more than 2,000 CEOs across continents. He's the futurist in residence at the Ringling College of Art and Design. Seriously, Mr. David Hule, is that how you pronounce it? Hule? Rhymes with cool. 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 There you okay. go. I, look, I just have to. The Ringling, the futurist in residence at Ringling. That's not Ringling Brothers Circus, and you uh, really are an astrologer. <laughs> yeah, no, they don't train clowns there. <laughs> um, it, it, that's where the initial name came from. But the Ringling College of Art and Design is one of the premier four year institutes in the world for creativity and design. And as I speak to CEOs around the world, creativity and creative thinking is the number one thing that they want. Now, for all my jokes about being a futurist, I actually sure. lived in the U.S. and I can tell you, in the '80s, it was huge. I was following lots of stories. And a woman, I think her name was Faith Popcorn. Oh, she was. Yeah, she was. She more was of a trends one of the person. early, yeah, trends person. And we were told whether we'd be wearing the new black yeah, and what that's we'd what be she, doing. Alvin Toffler and Marshall McLuhan were greater. Okay, futurists. what do you do that's different to that? To uh, trend setting. I, well, I basically look into the future. I'm not a technologist. It's more. Of, uh, it's more of the social future of humanity. Uh, so I'm known for saying that we've left the information age and we've entered the shift age. And the shift age is a time basically where we're moving into the global stage of human evolution. And the global economy is just the beginning of that. So globalization is no longer an economic term, but it's really what describes what is going to happen uh, to all of humanity in the next 15, 20 years. I was going to start off with why you're here, because you're here for a health conference, and then go on to your new book and well, the rest of the world. You want to go Let's start with the you. other way. The whole world. You've right. got a book coming out next right. year on the future of the whole world. Well, Tell us, have we got a future, and if we do, is we it do, good? We do, and it's a wonderful future. Oh. It is one of the most transformative times in history. I always talk to my audiences about whether they're parents. It's a wonderful time to be a child. We have a new millennium, a new century, a new age, the shift age, the name that I've coined that I'm known for around the world, and a new decade. And that's never happened before. And so we are in the global stage of human evolution. There is transformation going on. I, I wrote yeah, but a there's global warming and a lot of idiots out there too, isn't well, there? Well, there's always a lot of idiots out there, right? <laughs> I mean, that's what you do. You live off these idiots. So, that's you know, true. You know. But there are bad things too. Why are you positive? I really think we're about ready. Uh, we've so. Uh, agricultural age, industrial age, information age, the shift age, 21st century. Uh, what is, there's the legacy thinking that you rail against. It's the legacy thinking of the 20th century. People still are thinking 20th century solutions to 21st century problems and they don't exist. Climate change, the connectivity, financial connectivity, this, these are new issues. And, and, and I so, presume technology is one of the keys. Absolutely, of the absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. And, and, and I talk about the three forces of the shift age, flow to global, the flow to the individual. We as individuals are more powerful than we've ever been because of the explosion of choice and the accelerated electronic connectedness of the planet. So that when I knew I was coming on your show last week in Chicago, I could dial it up and watch your last few shows. Now the, the stellar end collective, but anyway, that sounded like right. something out of Star Wars or Star Trek. Um, just explain that as you would to a CEO, what that last one just The accelerated meant. electronic That's connectedness? It. Okay. It does sound like being so, up, so, so there are seven billion people on the planet. Okay. 5.6 billion of them have cell phones. Uh -huh. Now, what that means is, is we have cell phone ubiquity. If I had your cell phone number and I were to call you, maybe five seconds were a meter apart, your phone would ring. If I were to call somebody in the United States, 12,000 miles away, maybe another two seconds because of the relay mm -hmm. of the satellite. So what that means is there's no time or distance limiting human communication. And you always ask people, what do you say? So where are you? You know, on the cell phone. So there's no time, distance, or place. So like in my new book, Entering the Shift Age, I talk about one of the new contexts of the shift age is the concept of place is going away. It's gone away in communication. You and I could talk anytime, anywhere, any place in the world. We're not connected to place. So when you think about place, we don't get to decide who what we don't get to decide who our parents are or where we grow up. So that phrase, where are you from, is supposed to be significant. And I presume that's important then for a CEO when yes. you're advising, because that's a whole new brain it's a whole, mindset. It's a whole, right, exactly. It's, it's, it's a global economy. Um, I always say that with technology, it's power to the people. If you have a good app phone, like an iPhone or an Android phone, you have one or two of them, and you're a CEO, global CEO, you can run your company for a day from a park bench. That's what the accelerated connectedness of the planet means. It also means that if you think of Arab Spring, four years ago I said that 
when challenged by being optimistic, as you just have, that, that there would be upheaval in dictatorships in Islamic states because of the accelerated connectedness of the planet. Then just on that, because it's the, the communication and technology, as we know, has been right. fabulous in many ways. In my industry, not so much. Killing well, newspapers. Now, I gather your new book, you talk on this issue of well, communications and yes. media. I, I mean, I came... Do we I have just, any future? Um, yeah. You do, but it's all merging on the internet. I mean, I was—I worked at NBC, I worked at CBS, I was part of the creative team that created and launched MTV, Nickelodeon, CNN, and so then cable eviscerated broadcast, and then satellite came in, and, and the internet is the first time in human history that an old media is going away. It always used to be just added on. You know, radio came in, then television came in, radio didn't go away, cable TV print network didn't go away, but the internet is kind of the connective tissue of all media. So your local ratings may go down, but I can watch you from the United States. And just tell me, newspapers, any future? Not much. Oh. I, 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 in 2006, I was asked that question. Now, in the States, I would say the national ones, the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, USA Today, would would succeed and the small town papers are because that's really the only mm. media for small town but the middle size will not okay just on another subject again drilling it down you're sure. here actually for a health conference yes. and your previous book was, yes. was on a more um, um, detailed so, subject healthcare. Right. now given the aging population it affects us as it does America what's the message for CEOs or what's in, what are you going to well, be telling them at the conference well tomorrow, tomorrow? It's, it, it, it's the uh, it's the Medical Technology Association of Australia and so they're about medical technology but it's changing very rapidly it's about it, it's kind of bleeding out into connectivity into internet into innovation it's not just a siloed industry it's a 10 billion dollar industry in australia it's very important and so it's it, it's about innovation and i say in my book it's the new health age most people think healthcare is fixed it's only 150 years old modern healthcare the band-aid was invented in 1920 so it's a dynamic changing environment now a question i want to ask you might have noticed i've had a bit of yeah, thinking no, about I'm, health lately right. now what worries me is we're all going to live longer yes but the quality of life i'm not sure it's going to be worth well, it is it you know the the problem i always say as a futurist you, you people take one concept and they project it out in the present day concept so people are saying oh we're all getting older so this is going to be a problem it's not going to be a problem because we're getting older we can still think it used to be you had to retire at 60 because you weren't strong enough to work in the factory or work in the fields and the information age, equality of women, it was knowledge, you didn't have to have strength. So in the shift age, it's global. I can go anywhere and talk. Your message can go anywhere. We're having a new uh, age where if you live longer and you can still come up with good thoughts and good ideas, that can change the world. That's great. What about dementia? What about Alzheimer's? Then we've got to stop that because all these advantages you're talking about would be negated by that. Well, but they? the other thing is, and I speak to healthcare conferences mm -hmm. around the world, um, in about a year, you and I will be able to get our entire genetic map for about $1,500 US. I think okay? St. Vincent's here in Australia does a similar exactly. thing right now. We're very so, advanced. So let's say uh, you're a 25-year-old woman and you get your medical genetic map done and you find out genetically you have an early onset disposition to Alzheimer's. So at age 25, what are you going to do? You're going to do whatever healthcare at that moment in time says will slow it work out every day, take omega-3 fish oil. So, so we are going to live longer. By 2025, the average Australian at birth in 2025 is going to live to be 100. So it will change the concept of life, like retirement is not 65, it'll be 80. I like the way as a futurist you put a positive spin on the future, because I guess Absolutely. as a futurist we've got to have a future. Tell me this though, simple sure. question, as a futurist did you pick the US election? Yes I did. Good for you. In 2009 I was asked that question and I said Barack Obama. And if, <laughs> the reason why are the demographics, and if you look at the demographics, the demographics, he went with women, he went with blacks, he went with Hispanics, he went with, with Asians. So, yeah, absolutely. I called it right. Thank you very much. Then. It was a delight to talk to you. Thank you. Futurist to the CEOs. That's Thank you. David Hull. That's all we have time for tonight. But I can predict I will be back here tomorrow night. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll be back here tomorrow night with our Thursday night panel. I look forward to seeing you then. Good night.